Welcome to Spotlight Net TV with yet another exciting episode of the Global Wired Women, the show that casts a spotlight on women challenging the status quo from all over the globe. With your host, Jennifer Nash, global visibility strategist, publicist, CEO, and founder of Ark and Brook PR. Jen's passion is to transform entrepreneurial women into visible experts with authority through authentic storytelling. Jen's mission is to feature trailblazing, underrepresented, and often marginalized female entrepreneurs, providing them with a platform to be seen, heard, lovable, and unforgettable. And here's your host, Jennifer Nash. Hello, viewers. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Global Wired Women, where I feature unforgettable entrepreneurs from all over the world. Today, I'm super excited to have with me a, an amazing person, human being. Um, her name is Samantha Ruth. Samantha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Sam, please introduce yourself to our viewers. Who is Samantha Ruth? What's your story? Well, let's see. I am a dog mommy. I am a sister, aunt, psychologist, speaker, author, podcast host, and widow. Wow. That's a mouthful. So <laughs> let's start at the top. Tell me why Grief Hub? I know that you're also a host of Grief Hub, a Facebook uh, group that you have where you help people that are grieving or suffering from anxiety and, and mental health. So could, you, could we start with Grief Hub? What is Grief Hub and how did that come about? Grief Hub came out because I jokingly said to a friend that I needed it, that there's rehab for any and everything else in the world and there isn't rehab for grief. So after I lost my husband, um, I'm a psychologist and I was supposed to know what to do and I didn't. And um, I said, I needed rehab. <laughs> yeah. um, so I wanted to create something for everyone struggling based off of what I needed. So it is um, number one, it's a Facebook group. It's a free community for any and everyone who's experienced a loss. Um, and that can be the loss of a relationship, the loss of a job, the loss of a pet. Um, but it's also one-on-one -on -one services that I do with people um, like I needed. So I want to take everything off of your plate so that you can heal and survive. So that can be finding a handyman when the light bulb goes out and you're sobbing on the floor because you can't even Google local handyman. Yeah, I completely get it. So I really like, I mean, not like as in what you do, but I like the fact that you do what you do, right? Um, nobody likes to have grief. I lost my dad when I was 22 years old and I had no idea how to deal with that grief. I lost my sister about two years later. So, and then of course I've lost a lot of friends along the way and so many times I found myself at a loss where I have no idea how to even grieve. And so for me, if, if we had anything like what you have right now going on, I think it would have been so much easier. So tell me uh, from your experience, what sort of people uh, tend to gravitate to your group and come to seek your help? Would it be just an ordinary person who um, knows about, about you or how do they come about knowing and finding out about what you do? I've always um, had my clients mostly from word of mouth. I think people are comfortable with me once they get to know me and so they tell other people. Um, mm -hmm. So that probably is the biggest, biggest way people find it. But it really is for anyone. Um, we have some people who have moved and feel like they've lost everything because they're in a new place and they don't have their friends and family nearby and they feel all alone. So it's the, and it, there's also people in the group who want to learn how to be there for their friends and family going through a loss. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I'm passionate about because when I was in the early stages of grieving, um, people didn't know how to be there for me. And I want to help educate others in the group and in the world 
about the best ways to be there because grieving is a lonely journey and people don't know what to do. And it's important to help everyone know that something as simple as if you need anything or do you need anything can be a really stressful question for someone in the grieving state. So um, even referring people to the group who haven't been through the loss, but just want to know what do I do when someone I love goes through a loss? Mm -hmm. um, we live in this world that sweeps grief under the rug and doesn't talk about it. And so I'm this noisemaker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this is a very dynamic subject. I mean, you know, you've just talked about the carers, the people that actually care for people that have lost someone or are grieving. You've also talked about the fact that grief is not just about loss of a loved one. It could be loss of a um, a pet or moving. So I can resonate with two of those because like I just said earlier on, I've lost my own family members and friends, but I can also resonate with moving to a new country where you don't know anybody. 11 years ago, I, I needed you some, totally needed you. I moved to England for the first time in my life to come and live in England. And I was all by myself. And I, to say the least, to say I was anxious and, and stressed is, is an understatement because I was literally in a state of flux. I was either fleeing or fighting. And so could you delve deeper, a little bit deeper, maybe in just explaining what that type of grief looks like in your books? Uh, and I think the world doesn't understand that grief and anxiety coexist. It, it's impossible to be grieving without experiencing some sort of anxiety because there is pressure mm. to show up at work or for your children or to just bounce back and continue life because we have to go on whether we want to or not after whatever the law, you had to keep living in this new country. I had to keep living without my husband, whether I wanted to or not. And um, the world just keeps moving at a very fast pace. And so anxiety is there. There's this pressure the moment you open your eyes to, you know, oh my God, I have to go to work. And my coworkers and my bosses don't understand that inside I have this turmoil um, about, for me, it was, am I going to fall apart? Am I? And, and finally, I just said, I'm going to fall apart <laughs> and I'm not going to care about what the world thinks. But a lot of the world doesn't let go of that mask. A lot of the world struggles with keeping it together. And again, that's where I'm making this noise that yeah. there shouldn't be this pressure, that we shouldn't have to sweep grief under the rug. Uh, but but this anxiety exists because the rest of the world doesn't understand that grief doesn't end, that it doesn't end when the funeral ends or when you arrive in your new country, uh, and that that those of us living this loss or this new change have this inner battle going on from the minute we open our eyes until the minute we close them, mm. and it's invisible. Yeah, I agree. I agree because I also experienced it even much more recently. So I went out to Boston in 2019 to do my study abroad. And literally I was just there for four months, but I had um, picks and troughs, right? There's that excitement, I've just come to a new city and then you go down, you get so homesick that you can't even breathe and you hate the food, you hate the supermarkets, you hate everything about your new town. And then the next day you've come across something absolutely new and shiny, you get excited and you forget about home. And then the next day you're are, you are down, down again and you can't even get out of bed. So I can really, resonate with that. So thank you so much for sharing that uh, with, with our viewers. But if I we were to come out of this morbid uh, conversation for just one little second, we, being appreciative of the fact that we cannot just uh, uh, sweep grief under the rug. I appreciate that and I respect that. But I want to know something fun about Sam. What is it about you that nobody knows when you are not counseling people from anxiety and grief? What is it that you do that keeps you going? 
Oh, I am a ridiculous dork. <laughs> I am goofy. Um, I collect frogs. <laughs> I really okay. do. Um, my favorite song is called Peace Frog by The Doors. It probably started with that, but we don't know. I've just, I have little frog things all around and I love doing anything outdoors. Mm, mm, amazing. Speaking of outdoors, I know you've got this lovely man's best friend, in your case, woman's best friends, Sassy and Dallas. Tell me about your dogs. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, so Sassy is nine. She'll be nine on May 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she rescued me after I lost Harley. Yeah. Um, and Dallas rescued us both after we lost Jim. Wow. Uh, Sassy was grieving as much as I was. So these two little nuts are inseparable. Wow. It's interesting. The reason why I've been hard to ask you about uh, your dogs, because I heard somewhere, in fact, when I was in Boston, going back to that, my landlady, because I was staying in an Airbnb, she had a little gorgeous, gorgeous little puppy, and she was screaming and, and, and barking a lot some nights. And it turned out that there was this lady, her friend, who was coming to stay over with her, who had cancer. And is it true from your professional point of view that dogs do sense when somebody is suffering and or they're about to die? I think dogs sense any and everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I think they, I mean, if my mood shifts, they know, Dallas especially. Dallas, like, I say that Jim sent her to us. She is unlike any animal I've ever known. Mm -hmm. um, her name is Dallas for... I'm a diehard sports fan, but I'm a Cowboys fan. And I used to tell Jim that he was going to come home one day and we'd have a second dog um, because Sassy is Sassy and she needed a friend yeah. um, and, and the dog's name would be Dallas. And he would say, we can get another dog, but we are not naming her Dallas <laughs> <laughs> because he just, no, but nobody in my life is really a Cowboys fan. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I thought it was necessary. I thought he would yeah say you know we have to name her Dallas so yeah. here she is but she especially like even if I'm not crying she just knows and will come right here like I think they all know but yeah they do say you know dogs will let you know if someone else is sick and I truly believe that wow that's amazing. I mean, they do say they don't uh, say that dogs are man's best friend for nothing because they truly are have got that high sense of, of feeling and knowing what's going on in our lives. So, Sam, um, so if I were to take you back to a younger self, an 18 year old self, what would you say to your younger version of yourself today? Um, have more fun don't take life so seriously. Mm, mm. I like that. I like that. And what would you say if we had to dive into your superpower toolbox as a coach, a psychologist, a dog lover, dog mom, uh, what would be those two aspects, two attributes and um, traits that you have that you depend so strongly on that you would want to impart on our viewers, anybody listening who is probably going through something as um, traumatic as you are, as you were at the time, and uh, or coming from you from a professional point of view, what would be those two nuggets that you'd want to share with our viewers? Um, one moment at a time. Don't think too far beyond this moment. Mm. And do it your way. Tune out the noise and um, don't worry about what anyone else is saying and what the world says or your mom, dad, boyfriend, spouse, do it your way. Yeah. That's the only way through it. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much for that. So um, my show is always about giving back to the community, to our viewers, helping them out. Maybe there's a younger person, especially women, because this is all about women mentoring other women, especially those that are coming behind us, using our expertise, our lived experiences so that they can 
hopefully avoid the pitfalls that we've already been through. But of course, life is not that straightforward. They can still have their own challenges. What would you say would be your piece, the one piece of advice that you would give maybe a young woman who is just watching this show right here, right now, and she's thinking about being a, a psychologist. She's also thinking about helping out in, in grief counseling. What sort of professional advice would you give to that person? I would um, embrace, same thing, embrace your way, like embrace your quirkiness and your differences and do it your way, not the way the books say or the office policies say, um, do it your way. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's applicable to a personal life as well as a professional life, isn't it? You're right. You can't, you can't say it any more different than that. So thank you so much for that, Sam. So before I let you go, what um, last kind of words do you have to say maybe to your existing clients or to those that are looking to find you and, and uh, connect with you to find out more about what you do at Grief Hub and how you can help them and add value to uh, whatever experiences that they have right now? Um, they, SamanthaRuth.com is the easiest way to find me. and. Um, I think that I always, when I'm talking to you, I'm always talking to me. I learn as much from my clients as they will say that they do for me. I will never put on a suit to impress anyone else or sit in my living room. But even if I was on a stage, I, I'm me. And that's when I, why I'm saying to do it your way, because I do it my way. And I've lived my whole life with anxiety and I spent a long time trying to fight it and trying to fix it. And now I embrace it because it's my superpower. It, it is um, what makes me me and it's what makes me super sensitive and it what, it's what makes me get all of you and it's what makes me better. So um, what you think is your biggest weakness is your biggest strength. Mm. That's I like that. So be intuitive to your own self, your own mind and body, and then be in the be uh, present so that you can actually listen to what your body and what your mind is saying and then live your life on your own terms. I love that. I yeah. love that so much. So Sam, tell me, I know that you're not just a grief hub uh, expert, but you're also helping people deal with anxiety and mental health how you know there's always a stigma associated with mental health especially in the modern world that we live in how can people actually ask for help and not feel bad about it this is a great question i used to do this with just kids but now i do it myself and it works with all ages find a code word and i use a fun one i think it's easier to pick something uplifting so mine is peanut butter pancakes um, and you can give it to the people closest to you. And you also have to tell them what it means or what you need when you use it. So, uh, if I were to tell you peanut butter pancakes, that means I need help or I'm not okay. And when I say it, what I want you to do is distract me. So I don't want you to ask me what's wrong. I just want you to start telling me stories and get my mind off of what's bugging me. Wow. That's amazing. That is so amazing. And also the other thing is that if people are not able to access you directly, they can't come to Grief Hub yet. I know that you've written some books. Do you want to mention to our audience what those books are about? I know there's one that talks about it's illuminating women, something I'm not going to preempt it. I want you to tell our viewers what kind of books or resources that they can come across if they're not ready to come and see you. Women Who Illuminate and Permission Granted, both published by Kate Butler. Uh, um, they're stories by multiple authors, and you can find them on my website. And uh, so my chapter is Infinite Love and Permission to Grieve. And then there's another an, other amazing stories from wonderful authors. Amazing. Thank you so much for that, Sam.
Well, it's been such a joy having you on the show. I wish we could continue this conversation and delve deeper into uh, the stuff that you do. But I do know that what you do is mostly private things and we can't really go deeper into that. And I also know and appreciate that each case is different from another. So there's no blueprint. You just work with your clients as in when and how they come to you. And we'll be posting your, your links at, at the um, bottom of this video so that people know exactly where to find you and how to connect with you. So thank you so much for joining me on Global Wide Women today, uh, Samantha. It's been such a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me so much. Thank you. And have a great day now. You too.